Hello everyone, Pastor Jeremiah here and uh, thank you for tuning in this morning. Listen, today is Turn It Around Thursday. Turn It Around Thursday and uh, we're I'm just believing. I have faith and I'm just decreeing and declaring over your life that God is turning all things to your good because you love him and you're called according to his purposes. Isn't it a blessing to be a child of God? Isn't it a blessing to be a part of the redeemed? Isn't it a blessing to be account or counted as the beloved of the Lord, covered and washed clean by the blood of Jesus? You've been raised with Christ, seated with him in heavenly places. The Bible tells us that what can separate us from the love of God? Nothing. That if God be for us, who can be against us? And that we, we are more than conquerors uh, through him who has loved us. I'm telling you, we have so many promises. We have so much going for us. No wonder that if God be for us, who can be against us? And so I thank you for tuning in today because I truly believe that as you walk in faith and as you continue to stand on the word of God, that God's turning it around for you. Matter of fact, you just need to decree that over your life. You need to declare it over your life right now, wherever you're at, whatever you're doing. Just begin to decree it. God is turning it around for my good. Whatever you're facing, just decree it and declare. God's turning it around for my good. And so we have we have uh, been in this uh, uh, series or this study right now, Mark chapter six, and uh, going through talking about the storms of life. And uh, today, uh, as we go through it, I just want you to open your heart, open your Open your ears, open your mind and let the Holy Spirit minister because there's nothing like going through a storm and not being able to not be able to, to hear from the Lord or getting ministry during that time. And so I'm here to I'm, I'm just here today as a servant of the Lord to come and minister to you in this moment, to minister to you in this season, to minister to you in this storm and to let you know that you're going to make it. Uh the one great uh, one great missionary used to say, hey, we might not look like much when we get there, but we're going to make it because we're part of the only thing that is going to make it. And that is the church of Jesus Christ. So today I want to pick up and uh, we're going to be we're going to pick up in verse forty nine, Mark chapter six and verse forty nine. We've just been going uh, verse by verse in this and the Lord has been bringing a lot out. And uh, yesterday we was just talking about, uh, you know, don't stop in the middle. Don't stop in the middle. Satan, whatever Satan, Satan, the storm comes in the middle because Satan's trying to stop you. But God's plan is to promote you. And and also we was talking about how the Lord saw them and came to them. And when they were straining and uh, and not only did he see him, but he saw him in the fourth watch in the darkest moments. In the darkest time, the, the, the Lord came walking to him. So be encouraged in that. Let's move on. Verse 49. And this is what the Bible says. And when they saw Jesus walking on the sea, they supposed it was a ghost and they cried out. When they saw Jesus walking on the sea, they supposed it was a ghost and cried out. Listen to what the Bible says. I mean, listen to what the, the, the Holy Spirit was speaking to me through the Bible here. Don't allow storms to cause you to wrongfully discern the deliverance of the Lord. Don't allow storms to cause you to wrongfully discern the deliverance of God, to wrongfully discern the moving of God. Because, listen, I've seen it so many times. Sometimes we can get in storms and we begin to get cynical about things. We begin to get negative about things. We begin the, the very thing that we used to be passionate about or the thing that we used to love to do. We begin to criticize, become very critical over it. And before we before we realize it, that storm has begun to shift or has begun to change how we discern things. In other words, let me just say this. What's happening on the outside of the boat is beginning to come on the inside of the boat. 
the storm was on the outside of the boat. It was affected. They were on the inside of the boat, but, but still they were able to float on top of it. You can't allow what's on the outside of the boat to begin to affect what's on the inside of the boat. And when, when storms come in our lives, one of the things that, that Satan's trying to do is get us to wrongfully discern or to become critical or to become negative or to become cynical of the things of God. Now, I need to talk with you just for a little while about this, because that many times there are people that are walking through time, walking through tough times, walking through challenges, walking through depression walking through uh, the loss of a loved one, walking through a divorce, walking through a time where they, they've been in a, a financial attack and maybe they had to file bankruptcy or they've having to pick up and move because they're not able to afford the place they were living. Uh, you know, I could just keep on about some of the storms that we that we face and in within that, because this is so hard and so bearing and so heavy, we begin to discern or wrongfully discern what God is doing. And this is a this is a very dangerous uh, or let me say this, a very critical moment when this begins to happen, because this can take you in a direction that you might not come back from. This can take you in a direction to where. You begin to shut off everybody that you once received from. I've watched sometimes as people and they were they were hurting and they were struggling and you could see it. But because things were so painful and things were so hopeless in their lives, they began to push away the people that could help them. They began to push away the people that cared the most for them. They began to push away the people that God had placed in their lives to give them wisdom and knowledge and help in that moment. And you, you, you've got to be careful of this because the disciples, you see, they saw Jesus walking on this on this uh, water. And, and the Bible says this right here, that they supposed it was a ghost. They supposed it was a ghost and began to cry out or be afraid. You see, their deliverance was coming. But they saw it as something else. They saw it as something else because they were they, they were wrongfully discerning the deliverance of God. Why were they wrongfully discerning the deliverance of God? Because of the storm that was around them. The storm that was that was all around them had brought them into a place of fear, a place of panic, a place of anxiety. So they immediately began to assume the worst and not the best. Now, I'm about to turn this thing a full circle for you because because of these things that were happening. Now they could not discern the deliverance of God. They couldn't discern that Jesus was walking to them. They couldn't discern that this was their moment to be helped because of what they were walking through. You've got to be very careful with this because you can't help. You can't always help when storms come into your life. I wish we could. I wish we could stop them. I wish I wish that it would be the truth for me to say, hey, whatever you do today is going to determine whether you walk through a storm tomorrow. But that's not the truth always. That's not always the truth. And, and, and so I wish I could tell you that that you won't walk through another one. But that's not the truth. But what I can tell you, you might not can help the storms that come at you, but you can help your response to the storm. You can help your response in the storm. You can help how you hold yourself and believe and have faith in the storm. And beloved, let me tell you something. You've got to begin in, in a storm. You've got to ask God to give you ears to hear his voice. Ask God to give you the, the discerning of spirits. Ask God to give you a sensitivity to his plan, his perfect will and his purpose. Because you don't want to start wrongfully discerning what the Lord is doing. You don't want to get in that place and get negative. I've seen people sometimes when they were walking through storms, start getting negative over their family, start getting negative over their marriage, start getting negative over the church, start getting negative over the ministry. All of a sudden, no matter what the, what the, what the pastor does or what he teaches on, 
It, they, it ain't good enough. It ain't. It, it's not, you know, well, obviously I'm just not being fed anymore. Listen, beloved, take a step back. And if you're walking through a storm during that time, stop pointing the fingers at everybody else and start pointing the fingers at yourself and say, God, I need you to do something right here in this person right now. Help me to discern properly what I'm walking through. Help me to, to discern the deliverance of God. Because the person I'm pushing away might be the very person God wants to use to bring me out. Now, think about this. <laughs> what if as as Jesus came walking, what if he would when when he turned around and finally revealed himself to him? What if he had not done that? They would not have received their deliverance. They would not have deceived their rescue. Don't allow the storms to cause you to wrongfully discern the deliverance of God. But ask the Lord in those times. Ask him, God, give me ears to hear. Give me eyes to see. Give me a heart to obey. And Father, in Jesus name, give me a spirit to discern properly what you have for me. Because when you begin to do this, you'll begin to see the deliverance of the Lord show up. You'll begin to see God show up in a mighty way and you'll begin to discern the deliverance of the Lord. You see this a lot of times, unfortunately, with people who are addicted to, to things or, you know, they walking through a tough time and, and, and they may be addicted to certain things and God brings someone or, you know, someone into their life to help them get away from that. And, and they think this person's out to judge them. They think this person's out to condemn them. They think this person's out just to just to try to put, you know, to, to slam them, not realizing God sent this person to help them. You see, let's rightfully discern the deliverance of God. Do not allow the storm to affect your discernment. Do not allow the storm to, to, to affect your discernment, but allow, but allow the Lord to deliver you out of what you're walking through. And so I, I just want to pray for you in just a moment because I really sense, I really sense, you know, I, I said this preaching not too long ago, just because you're walking through the storm doesn't mean the storm has to be in you. Just because you're in it don't mean it has to be inside of you. It's when the storm gets in you is when you can't seem to discern the deliverance of God. And so today I'm just going to pray that the Lord would help us to discern, help us to hear, help us to, to be able to see with prophetic eyes what we need to see right now and what we need to do. And I just want to decree again once one more time over you. You're not going to die in that storm. You're not going to stop in that storm. That storm is not going to take you out. But that's listen, you're going to make it through that thing right there. You just got to rightfully discern your deliverance. So let's pray today. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for everyone that is watching right now. Everyone that is listening right now. Everyone, Father, that may be struggling, God, to be able to rightfully discern what is happening during this time or during this storm. And Father, right now, I ask you in the name of Jesus that, Lord, that you would quicken us all to be able to know your deliverance, to hear your voice, to see what you're doing, to have a heart to obey God and, and to, Lord, not to push away those who are trying to help us. To not push away those who are trying, not to push away those you have brought into our lives for deliverance, Father. But in the name of Jesus, I ask you now, God, that you would help us, Lord. Help us, strengthen us, keep us in this thing, God, so that we can make it out of it. Lord, we decree and declare will not take us out in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, I thank you for this right now. I pray for people right now, Lord, that are trying to maybe trying to help others that are in a storm. And for whatever reason, that person has pushed them away. That person has 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 uh, just said no to their help. Or that person won't listen or that person won't won't even give them the opportunity to speak into their life. 
Father, in the name of Jesus, I ask, open the door for that person. Make a way for that person. Lord, I pray, give that person the right things to say. And Lord, I pray for the I pray for the person they're wanting to minister to, that you will give them ears to hear what you have to say, God. I thank you for this right now. And I believe you for this right now in the name of Jesus. We call this done now, Father, and we thank you. Grant it by the power and the anointing of the Holy Spirit in Jesus name. Amen. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for watching today. And uh, just really sense that right there. Really feel that right there. A lot of people, a lot of people get uprooted from churches. A lot of people get uprooted from families. A lot of people find themselves out there by themselves because they wrongfully discerned the deliverance of God in a storm. They could not see that the person that was or the, the way God was wanting to help them. Let me say it that way. The way God was wanting to help them. They could not discern his hand in it. So therefore they pushed their deliverance away. Be able to discern it. Pray for God to give you discernment. Listen, we love you. We care about you. And uh, we're believing God's best for you. And don't miss tomorrow. Tomorrow's Faith Friday. Faith Friday. And uh, it'll be the last teaching, the last devotion on the, life, on the, uh, 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 the storms of life. And I want you to get that. So we'll see you tomorrow. God bless. Thank you for tuning in to the Abundant Life devotional series. These devotionals are available across many platforms, including Facebook, the Abundant Life Revival Network YouTube channel, and the Abundant Life app. If you are in the South Atlanta or North Macon Forsyth areas, we would love to have you visit one of our campuses. For locations or more information about Abundant Life Church, please visit us at AbundantLifeChurch.com. Remember, this is your season to overflow. Your season is about to change.